Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number nine from the November um, 2018 Cambridge two th um, Pure Mathematics P1 paper. Um, this is from the 9709 syllabus. This is variant three. Paper one, variant three. This is also question nine as well for my endotopic worksheet on quadratics from my P1 collection um, from Cambridge. It says a curve has equation y equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 1, and a line has equation y equals kx plus k, k squared, where k is a constant. First of all, show that for all values of k, the curve and line meet. Okay, so we have a quadratic and a linear. This is a linear because the x is the variable, the k is a constant. So it's got something x plus some constant. So this is linear, this is quadratic. So we've got to um, show that these these will always meet. Okay, now, when we want to find out whether um, two graphs intersect or they meet, then we take the equations and we solve them simultaneously. So we've got to solve simultaneously equation y equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 and y equals kx plus k squared. We've got to solve those two equations simultaneously. Now, to solve equations simultaneously, what we do is we take one of the equations and we substitute it into the other. So I've got this equation here. I'm going to replace um, the y in this equation with 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. So I'm going to take this and replace this y with it. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to end up with 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 is equal to kx plus k squared. All right now some people will say, but why don't you just say equate the two equations? Equate them. Why did you say substitute one into the other? All right, I'm just giving you a general um, principle rather than specific cases. In this case, yes, because they're both in terms of y, we could say let's equate them. But sometimes you have something like x squared plus y squared equals 7 and y equals 2x minus 1. We can't say equate the two equations now. All right, because this is in terms of y, this is in terms of x squared plus y squared. You can't really make y the subject easily. So equating them won't really help us, okay, in any way. So what we need to do in, in a case like this is we say, okay, let's take this y and replace it with 2x plus 1. And then we'll have an equation with just x in it, and we can solve that equation. So I'm, I'm explaining to you in a way that's general for any type of question that you might see, so you understand what to do when you have different cases. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to set up this as if we're going to solve it. This is a quadratic, so we're going to try to f write in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. All right, so we have an x squared term here, so we have 2x squared. We have minus 3x, and here we have kx, so I'm going to subtract kx from both sides. So I get negative kx, and I've got plus 1, and I've got um, this constant k squared. I'm going to subtract k squared from both sides. Minus k squared equals 0. Now this is kind of like getting into that form. I've got a ax squared, and I've got these two x terms, which I will combine. What I'll do is I'll write plus x times minus 3 minus k, and then there's plus 1 minus k squared. These are both constants, so they together will be our constant. So we can say from here that our a is 2, and our b is negative 3 minus k, and our c is 1 minus k squared. Okay, that's when you're looking at that form. Now, we, we're told, or we've got to find the values of k, or we've got to show that for all values of k, the curve and the line meet. That means there will always be a solution, one or two solutions, okay, to this equation. All right? There will always be either one or two solutions. There will either be a repeated route, or there will be distinct routes. The only option that's not available is that there will be no solution. So there's always going to be a solution. And we know that the way for us to decide is by using the discriminant, which is taken from this formula, just to give you the background of it, which is the very famous quadratic formula, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Now, the thing that we're interested in this formula in, for us to tell us about the number of solutions, is b squared minus 4ac. Because if b squared minus 4ac is um, negative, there will be no solution. And that's the only case that we are excluding. We, have, we want to show that it's going to be always positive. Right? So what we need to do is for us to be able to determine or to discriminate how many solutions there are, we have to take, get an expression for the discriminant. Okay. So if we take the discriminant of this, 
uh, my b squared minus 4ac so we can say the discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac so the discriminant is equal to b squared which is minus 3 minus k squared minus 4 times a which is 2 times c which is 1 minus k squared okay that k is only the k is squared there so we're going to have here the discriminant is equal to now when you square something like this if you think about it it's the same as squaring k plus 3 squared why is it the same as saying that because if i take minus 3 minus k and i square that it's the same as taking minus 1 out of this you have 3 plus k and if you square all of that minus 1 squared is going to give you 1 so you end up with 3 plus k squared so it's the same as saying 9 plus 6k plus 6k sorry be careful about your k's and your x's plus k squared okay 9 plus 6k plus k squared right if you were to if you were to because you square this you get 9 you square this you get k squared you multiply these together you get 3k double it gives you 6k so it's the same as actually 3 plus k all squared minus 8 times 1 which is minus 8 and minus 8 times minus k squared which is plus um, 8k squared okay that's an expression for the discriminant so if we take this we're going to have 9k squared and we're going to have um, plus 6k I'm going to have plus 1 so this is an expression for the discriminant now we have to show that this is always positive or zero it can never be negative if the discriminant is negative there will be no solution if the discriminant is positive or zero there will be either one solution if it's zero or there will be um you know distinct two distinct solutions if it's positive and we can see from here this is actually a what's called a perfect square right whenever you see the first and last term as square numbers you can check to see if it's a perfect square we're writing the square root of the first number the square root of the last number and the sign that comes between before the middle term as the same sign if that was a minus i'd write a minus here and i'm going to square that bracket and i'm going to check if i square this i'm going to get 9k squared and i'm going to get 3k times 1 doubled which is 6k and i'm going to, I'm going to get 1 squared which is 1 so this and this are the same if i expand this i get exactly that so the discriminant is equal to this and we know that 3k plus 1 all squared must always be greater than or equal to zero okay because you're going to whatever value comes in here it's going to become positive after you square it so the lowest this can ever be is when um, you know when it's zero okay so that if k becomes for example negative one third this is going to become zero and zero squared will give you zero so this will always be either equal to or greater than zero so we can we can say as the discriminant <coughs> okay the discriminant is always greater than or equal to zero for all for all x values okay then therefore we can say that okay the line and the curve the line and curve will what does it say will will meet for all you can say k values sorry the, the line and the curve will meet okay i should say k values not x values of course okay so as the discriminant is greater than or equal to zero for all k values therefore the line and curve will meet okay so that's um part a or part one okay so that's that part done 3k plus uh, 3k plus 1 squared was a discriminant fifth yeah okay so now it says state the value of k for which the line is a tangent to the curve so we know that the discriminant was 3k plus 1 squared that's a discriminant okay so the value of k where the line is a tangent to the curve so if you were to draw a curve and you were to have a tangent to the curve the tangent to the curve is a line that touches the curve in one place alone Okay, so the value of k for which the line is a tangent to the curve, okay, so you can say the line is a tangent to the curve when, when b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. So when 3k plus 1 squared 
is equal to zero. So that means when 3k plus 1 is equal to 0, and take the square root of both sides, or when k is equal to negative 1 over 3. Okay, so when k is equal to negative 1 over 3, that's when you're going to have the case of the line being a tangent to the curve. Okay, and then it says find the coordinates of the point where the line touches the curve. So we've, part, we've done the first part. Now, what we know is that we have set up an equation already in the last page. I'll go back here and show you. Um, we have set up this equation over here. This equation over here, which I'll copy. And I'll paste over here. This is the equation where we substituted one of the equations the other. And it's in terms of k. Now we've got to find the point where the line is a tangent to the curve. So we're going to take this. And we're going to replace the k with the value of k for which the line is a tangent to the curve. So we're going to put k equals minus one third into this equation and then that will give us the equation for which the line is a tangent to the curve and we can solve it to find the x and y values so now let's replace the k with minus three so you have minus three minus one third sorry so minus three minus minus one third plus you've got one minus let's close that bracket as well okay one minus you've got minus one third squared okay equals zero Okay, I've just replaced the k with minus one third. So be careful of the minus signs here. So it'll give you 2x squared plus x times. This is going to give you minus 3 plus a third. Minus 3 plus 1 over 3. That's minus 9 over 3 plus 1 over 3. That's minus 8 over 3. And here you're going to have 1 plus 1. In fact, 1 minus 1 over 9. Right? Because this is going to become... 1 over 9. This is still a minus. So it's 1 minus 1 over 9, which is 8 over 9. That's going to give you plus 8 over 9 equals 0. Now we have to expand this. Well, we can just simplify this. So 2x squared minus 8 over 3x plus 8 over 9 equals 0. So this is a quadratic equation, which we can solve. And what I'm going to do um, to make it a bit easier to solve is I'm going to Multiply everything by 9 to get rid of the fraction. Um, and I suppose I could also divide everything by 2 as well. But let me multiply by 9 first. That's going to be 18x squared minus, and that's going to be, um, when I multiply this by 9, the 3 and 9 cancel give you 3. That's 24x. 3 times 4, 8 is 24. And then this, the 9 will cancel completely. So I'll, I'll be left with this. And I can see 2 is a common factor. So 9x squared minus... 12x plus um, 4 equals 0. So I have here, and I know because it's a tangent to the curve, I know I'm going to have one answer. Okay, there's only one repeated root. So for sure, this must be a, a perfect square. That's one thing you can realize. It definitely will be a perfect square. So what we can do is we can write this as 3x, and there's a minus here, so put a minus, and that's going to be a 2. Squared, is that right? 9x squared plus 4, middle term will be minus 6x doubled minus 12x, good. So we can say that 3x minus 2 is equal to 0, it's a repeated root, and x is equal to 2 thirds. So we found the value of x, okay, for which this is um, going to be a tangent to the curve, and now we need to find the value of y. Now we know y is equal to, we can use this form here, this I think will be an easy way to find y. Where's it gone? Okay, so we can use this here. We know that k is negative one third. So y equals negative one third x plus negative one third squared, which is one over nine. Okay, so we can now say that therefore y is equal to, we need the coordinates, it's going to be two thirds replacing the x, so minus one third times two thirds. And you're going to have plus one over nine. That's going to give you minus 2 over 9 plus 1 over 9, which is minus 1 over 9. So the coordinates of the point are 2 thirds and minus 1 over 9. Okay, so does it say a point? Okay, so the point, the point we're looking for is given by this. Okay, this is the point where the line is a tangent to the curve. Okay, so there's the answer for this question. 
Question number nine from the um, end of topic worksheet that I was asked about, also from October, November 2018, Pure Mathematics P1. Um, other questions from the um, paper, October, November 2018, P1, Cambridge paper 9709 can be found in the playlist over here. Other questions from this end of topic worksheet can be found in the playlist that will be appearing in this region. Place about quadratics. Playlist about this topic, sorry, this worksheet. Other questions from quadratics in general from P1 from Cambridge can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And the, the card that's been appearing from the start of the video will show you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for effectively. Thank you for watching and see you soon.